Hello again, everybody, and welcome to The Tom Sawyer Show here on HBC TV 25. I'm Justin Barrientos. Show brought to you, as always, by Wellington's Pub and Grill. Head coach Tom Sawyer joins us here today. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're talking about a loss this week uh, to Minnesota State Mankato. It was one of the big games in Division II football as Minnesota State was ranked number three, and you were ranked number 10 coming into the game. Um, again, don't want to put words into your mouth yet, but uh, your overall thoughts on the game. Well, I just think it was it was a great opportunity. I mean, you know, to play in those games, uh, it just makes you more confident to play in games like that later on. Mm -hmm. And we hope we have another opportunity, even maybe against Mankato down the road. But um, first of all, I, I just think that we, you know, we had a good start. We, we took the opening drive down. Um, and if we'd have punched that in for a touchdown instead of a field goal, that would give us some momentum. Um, but we got the field goal, got on the scoreboard first. Um, we were off and running. And uh, the very next series, they turned around, had a big play against our defense and, and scored a touchdown. Took a little bit of wind out of our sails, turned around and came right back down and got another field goal. So, you know, seven to six in there, um, we're still in the game. And then we just couldn't, couldn't get things going offensively. Um, we, we, we had a couple drops, we had a couple sacks. You know, we just were out of, out of sync. And they got it rolling a little bit and started um, um, running the ball a little bit better. Uh, but we held them to 114 yards of rushing. So we really did a good job in the game. We just couldn't score with them, um, which was a normal for us. So it just wasn't a great day for us offensively. Yeah, I remember that's what you said when you were exchanging emails and talking about the show today. You said it just wasn't our day yep. uh, this week. But it, it's very interesting because you were held to your lowest point total of the season, but you also held Minnesota State to their lowest point total of the season. So how does that kind of match up between you two? I mean, I guess... The question is, how, how good is Minnesota State? Well, they're very good. You know, we think we have a pretty good football team, and, mm -hmm. and they were better that day um, in, in all parts. We, we didn't have a good day um, exchanging the field. We didn't punt the ball well. Um, so in those big games, um, you have to have all parts playing at, at a high level. Um, and they were just a little bit better that day. Um, you know, you look at the overall scoring, um, it really wasn't a runaway. It wasn't a big, you know, differential. We had we had the ball more than they did for time of possession. So a pretty even matchup, but they were the better football team that day. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that, like I said before, it helps us grow. Um, I look at it as a positive as best we can and and know that we had an opportunity, but we still were eight and one. Um, we're still going to be ranked. We're still going to be a, a chance for a playoff game. So we got to look. We got to look forward. Uh, we got two games in twelve days, and uh, so my mind is, is kind of out of Mankato <laughs> and heading heading farther west. So, um, but I, I still think it was a good day. Um, and the ball went their way more than did that for us. Yeah, I was actually going to ask that, and I don't want this to, to sound like a you know morbid type th situation because, like you said, you are eight and one, mm -hmm. and so it's still a very good season, and uh, playoffs are looming and all that that sort of thing. You say that you've already moved past it. I make you relive it here. But <laughs> from the player perspective, how long do you think it, it hangs with them? Do they do they let that go as much as they let a win go? Um, I, I, I want it to be with them for a while. Um, it should sting them a little bit, and I know it does. Um, but I thought the sidelines were very positive, even at the end of the game. Guys were like, hey, it's one game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I don't think our team is going to go, oh, poor us. Mm -hmm. um, we've got too much going on. In fact, I sent them an email today talking about the history of, of Winona State football, and, and they're now in that conversation and have a chance to be one of the best teams we've ever had here. So there's still a lot going on in our program. Um, I, I think our kids are, are excited to go play again. Um, and we'll heal from it. We need to grow from it and use it as a learning opportunity and uh, get right back on the field next Saturday. All right, let's talk about uh, the offense uh, during the game against Minnesota State. Uh, six points. Uh, the, the running game uh, was shut down to, I think, uh, 17 uh, total yards. What are some of the things that uh, you need to fix this week, or was it just that Minnesota State's defense was just keyed in on you this week? Well, I think both of that. One is they put nine people in the box, and uh, you know Darren threw the ball well the first couple series. Then he got hit a couple times. I think that affected him. Um, he just wasn't wasn't as sharp as you know the rest of the game. And, and we got to be on, you got to be on point in those mm -hmm. games. So they really had the opportunity to put nine guys down in the box and to start to stop the run, and they did. You know we had a bunch of those lost yardages were on sacks too so they had six sacks i mean it's just not like us i mean we've only given up 14 all year and six of them came in one game um so it was just a, a matter of mistakes um darren not being as sharp i think he, he took a couple shots that that hurt him um although he'll be fine but um during the game that 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 shocks you when you can't throw the ball when they're playing man cover and we've been able to do it all year and i expect we'll be able to do it again this week uh, but in that particular game we weren't as sharp as we'd like to be 
Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit of defense. Uh, Andrew Spencer had a forced fumble uh, in the game, so I mean, your team was right in there. Talk about the defense as a whole. How did they play? I thought they played really well. I mean, you, you hold that team that averages, I don't know, almost 300 yards a game in rushing to 114 yards, uh, one of the top in the country. Um, they're our leading, you know, top scoring offense in, the, in, the, in our conference. Um, so I, we did a good job against them. Uh, what we, we didn't do is we didn't stay away from the big downs. You know, they had three plays over 20 yards, and, and those are, are things that hurt you. And they put them in scoring position, they capitalized on that. So, and the other part was most of the second half, uh, Justin, they played on a really short field. Um, we had the wind and played the whole game where we punted out of our end zone two or three times and couldn't get the field flipped, um, especially when we had the wind. So there's a lot of those things that, that are going on within the game that people don't see in the stat line, mm -hmm. um, but that does really wear, puts a wear and tear on you uh, when you're playing on a half a field against that good of a team. Let me ask about the weather because it was you know, kind of unseasonably cold and you didn't get the snow that northern Minnesota had, right. so uh, Mankato wasn't quite as bad. But how does the game change with wind, with snow, with bad conditions? Yeah, you know, actually, it, it, it didn't affect us at all. Uh, we were lucky. It was cold. I mean, it was 30, well, 5 degrees, 33 degrees or something like that. And it ended up to be over 40 when the sun came out. I mean, we started taking jackets off and stuff. I think as players, you can ask the guys today, but I, I really think that it was it was perfect conditions, really. The, the wind wasn't very bad there. It was straight down the field with gusts of maybe 10, 15 miles an hour, which you can throw the ball in either direction with that. So um, the field was fine. You know, they have great grass on their field. Um, you know, the Vikings have done a good, great job along with Mankato to, to keep their grass nice. Um, probably one, it, it is the nicest grass field that we play on. Um, and, and with that, I um, didn't think it had a factor at all in the game. All right. Um, let's talk about uh, then the planning because you were talking about uh, the short turnaround in a couple of weeks. You, you know, you play again this Saturday, but then you have a Thursday game yep. kind of lining up. How much does having to plan for a game on Thursday mess with this week and the Saturday planning that you do? Well, I don't think the planning has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, we know these teams really well. Um, the coaches have been there a long time, so we, we, we have a pretty good feel for them. We, you know, we watch a lot of tape. So our younger coaches, we spend a lot of time in our, you know, pre, uh, pre planning and have things all broke down already, even all the way through August and a game. So, you know, with a short week next week, um, we'll, we'll be ready for that. We'll practice, you know, Sunday, Monday, and, and instead of taking a day off and, and play right through it. But for our guys, it's fun. It's like, let's go play two games in 12 days and, you know, let's have a blast doing it. And uh, because we know what the outcome can be at the end. All right, a couple minutes left in the segment, so let's keep talking about the Minnesota State Mankato game. Who are your standout players? Who are the ones that really kind of shown through this week? Well, Jake Blue again was another big one. Um, you know, he, that kid does a tremendous job in the return game, both on the punt returns. Of course, um, they had you know one of the best you know kickers in the league too. Him and Carter McCulley are the best too. Um, and so the kickoffs were, were deep, and, and uh, but we had great returns on them. We did flip the field on those occasions. Uh, but putting the ball, he kicked it nice and high, so he really didn't get a chance to get off and run. In a, but he did. He played a tremendous game. Um, I, I think offensively, uh, we had a couple kids that played pretty well. Uh, Jake Gronholtz played exceptionally well um, in the game. Um, I, I think that um, you know uh, the, the, the tight ends that we had played very well. Um, so up front, we did a pretty nice job against those guys. Um, and then defensively, you know, Andrew Spencer um, played exceptional. Michael Gomez played exceptional, and Luke Teague played exceptional. So all three of those guys on the defensive side, one at each level, played uh, outstanding football. As you said, uh, you held Mankato to their lowest point total of the season so far. So how does that set you up uh, for the last two games of the season, even the playoffs, to show that you can uh, stay with with the top five team in the country, considering you were top ten? Yeah, I, I really think that we just got to go out and prove ourselves uh, and go play as hard as we possibly can. Um, and I think our kids are doing that. I think we have to have another one of those games that, that we break back out offensively. We got to get our offense off and running, uh, get all four wheels going, you know what I mean? Get it get it cooking again, run the football. Um, they've been struggling against the run, so we got we to establish ourselves and with, with our play action pass and so on. Um, and then defensively, we just got to shut them down. They've played with three, three or four different quarterbacks. The guy they're going to start this week as a sophomore uh, runs the ball a little bit as well. So, you know, we've seen this all year. Um, and they're struggling. They've lost seven games in a row now. Um, so we got we to get out and get after it. But we got to establish ourselves offensively again and put some points on the board. All right. We're going to take a break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. And when we come back, we'll get the player perspective. Dustin Iverson will join us first right after this. With so many new items on the menu at Wellington's Pub & Grill, you're in for some tough decisions. Six different salads, homemade soups, huge wraps, juicy steaks, the Wells own smokehouse ribs, and as always, the best burgers in town. See, we told you it wasn't going to be easy. 
Log on to wellingtonspubandgrill.com for daily lunch and evening specials. With so many choices for lunch and dinner, you can never come to this well too often. Good luck with the family. I'm home. Oh, hi. Where is everyone? They're still here. I just gave everyone the HBC Wi-Fi password. Stream like a hero. Only HBC has the fastest in-home Wi-Fi, where multiple users can download and upload, share files, and stream audio and video simultaneously. What's a Southern girl? It's waking up before the sun rises. It's loving the simple things in life like the dirt roads that lead you home. It's working hard to get what you want. It's hanging your own stands, breaking your own ground, and strategizing every little move for that one moment when everything you've worked for is standing right in front of you. Even if I fail a million times, I keep pushing myself till I'm exhausted, filthy, and about to give up. And that's when the adrenaline hits. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show here on HBC TV 25, brought to you by Wellington's Pub and Grill. Coach Sawyer, I guess our theme this week is new blood, maybe, because we yeah. have uh, two new uh, guests on the show. Two new guests. Dustin, thanks for being here, man. Thank you. Well, we appreciate it very much. Let's get right back to it. Uh, let's go back to last week's game. Uh, one is a, a guy that came from North Dakota, used to playing in big games. Um, what was that like? And compare that a little bit to what your experiences have been before. Um, it was uh, probably one of the biggest games I've been in. Um, the biggest probably was uh, I played in NDSU versus UND. That was a pretty big game, but to play in a top 10 matchup, I mean, that's something as a kid, you know, you work, you work all off season for, and to play in a game like that, that's, that's awesome. It was a great experience for me, and I was glad to be a part of it. You know, you and Zach Olstead have really been, become quite a pair, and I'm not sure what that really <laughs> means, but uh, pretty fun. But as a, as a new person into our program, and, and to get with Zach and, and that tight end group, the OT core, what's that been for you, and, and how's, how exciting has that been? Um, I guess you can see from the hair, we kind of have the same style. <laughs> um, we just see, we do our own thing, and uh, this off season, uh, Jack Nelson, also one of uh, Zach Olstead's good friend, he said, you know, get with Zach, great program guy, and uh, you know, he'll teach you the ropes. And uh, I listened, and he's just someone that, you know, I, I try to admire his game, because, you know, he's a hardworking kid, he's not someone who's afraid to go in the hole and hit someone, and it's, it's someone that's good to uh, mimic your game off of. You know, the last one, the last one I have for this part is, you know, you guys playing side by side on the field together sometimes. Sometimes you're running, you know, high-fiving on the way in way out. But when you guys are out there together and you know you got Eric Berth or JV in back there and you know we're going to run the football, what goes through your mind? Uh, get on someone and uh, try to put them in the ground because those are someone, <laughs> those two backs are someone who can make a guy miss. And if they make the guy miss, uh, we're going to be running down the field putting our hands up because uh, they make some big plays. Awesome. All right, earlier this season against Minot, you had a touchdown catch, which was your first collegiate touchdown. Can you kind of walk us through that and give us your emotions in scoring? Um, that was pretty big. I mean, everyone's first touchdown. And, uh, you know, I had some coaches there. So it was back in my home state. It was kind of a cool thing. But, you know, it was funny because I was in before and I had blood coming down my arm. And the trainer's like, well, let's wrap that up. And I was like, we're pretty close to the goal line. If I get called in, you know, I'm not going to be able to go in. He said, well, let's do it. They called my personnel. We ended up running it, and that's how I got my first touchdown. So I'm glad I didn't get my arm taped because <laughs> that would have <laughs> missed your chance. Yeah, I would have missed my chance. So. You know, you look at, uh, you know, going back to the Mankato game, I want to ask one more thing about it offensively. And, you know, we took the first two drives and, and drove it right down at them. What was going through the mind of the offense or, and or you uh, at the beginning of the game? Um, got to score because in those games, it's the ones that you know punch the other team in the mouth first. They're gonna they're gonna be the one that come away with the win. So we marched the ball right down. You know we had uh, you know we should have got it in, but you know it happens. You know we can't let that affect you. So the next series we marched it down again. You know, but um, what's going through your mind is you know score because in those games you got to put up the points. Yep, sounds good. I got one more, Justin, mm -hmm. just real quick. Yeah. Uh, you know, talking about. Um, Coming in from North Dakota, everybody was talking about the weather, but you played in this a lot, you know, with the, with the wind, wind, with the wind, and and you know, how was it for you guys being 30 degrees of playing? Um, you can't let it affect you. I mean, it's it's all mind, you know. You got to be mentally tough, as you say. I mean, you can't let that affect you because if you do, you're just you're not going to play well. So you just got to tough it out. You know, they got to do it too. So you know, just be the bigger. Can't. 
say a bad word on here. But <laughs> tougher. Yeah, just be, just just be, be tougher. tougher. <laughs> yeah, be the tougher one in the game. <laughs> All right, I want to take you back into high school. Uh, last week, Coach, we had someone play in the Iowa Shrine Bowl. You played in the Mondak Bowl, which is Montana and North Dakota. Right. Uh, that was 2013. Talk about the honor of that and, and uh, being able to play in a game like that. So that game, it is the top 32 high school uh, football players selected by the state. And to be selected that, that was awesome. I got the chance to play in the Shrine Bowl too, but to go there, it was it was an incredible week. I met so many great people, and you know, there's people that I played that play for Bemidji now. They play for Northern State, Minot State. So just so many great different people that I've met throughout my journey, and uh, the game was awesome. You know, we uh, we were down 21-0 in the first quarter. <laughs> we came back. There was a pick six, and um, they got called back. They scored a touchdown. We ended up losing by I think like 10 points or something, but. It was a great overall week, and it was a fun experience. All right. Uh, last question that uh, I think we have for you here. You're majoring in political science. Is that what you're going to pursue in your career? Um, I actually switched to business now, but um, <laughs> I did like politics, yeah, but uh, I don't see myself being the president anytime soon, so uh, I think I might head over to business and see, what the, see where my life takes me there. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Thanks, buddy. Thank, yep, thank you for joining you. us here today. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, Justin Bergeron will be our guest on the Tom Sawyer Show right after this. What's a Southern girl? It's waking up before the sun rises. It's loving the simple things in life like the dirt roads that lead you home. It's working hard to get what you want. It's hanging your own stands, breaking your own ground, and strategizing every little move for that one moment when everything you've worked for is standing right in front of you. Even if I fail a million times, I keep pushing myself till I'm exhausted, filthy, and about to give up. And that's when the adrenaline hits. Pick your channels, not your nose. With HBC's Essentials Plus, pick and choose the channel packs of your choice without getting your fingers dirty. With so many new items on the menu at Wellington's Pub and Grill, you're in for some tough decisions. Six different salads, homemade soups, huge wraps, juicy steaks, the Wells' own smokehouse ribs, and as always, the best burgers in town. See, we told you it wasn't going to be easy. Log on to wellingtonspubandgrill.com for daily lunch and evening specials. With so many choices for lunch and dinner, you can never come to this well too often. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show on HBC TV 25, brought to you by Wellington's Pub and Grill. And uh, Coach Sawyer, we're staying with offense here today. Yeah, Justin Bergeron is here. Thanks for coming, Jason. Thanks Appreciate it, Justin. Um, you know, let's, let's go back to last week as well. And, uh, you know, it was a big game for us. What did it really mean to you and the team to be playing in a top 10 matchup? Yeah, I mean, it kind of, as Dustin said, it's something you work for all throughout being a kid to play in a big game like that, especially both top 10 and the fact that it's a, a rivalry game makes it even, even more special. And the weather was a pretty cool thing. I know some people kind of don't like playing the cold, but I mean, as a kid, you always playing backyard football out in the snow and it wasn't as much snow, but it was cold and it was just a really overall cool experience to be part of. You know, going as we were walking on the field, you know, I, I, I always notice, but your sister's there is one of our cheer, cheer team girls. And, and uh, what's that like for you? You go on the field, you're coming off, there's your sister, and you're, I know your family's there as well. But how cool is that to have both both of you here at, at Winona State? It's a, it's a really cool experience. I mean, as you talk about throughout the recruiting process, Winona State is a family-oriented thing, and it, it really has become for us. Um, sister's a cheerleading captain is uh, here, and... It's just something that continually that we get a bond over, and um, we're hoping to get the younger sister up here too. She's in high school, so so we'll see. But Winona State has just really became a family experience for us, and having her out on the field with us is, is really cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I know one of the reasons Coach Sawyer brought you on the show today is because you've already kind of started your post-football career. Uh, you've developed a, a web app uh, and holistic uh, foods and, and meal preparation. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the app I, I worked on, I started as a project uh, last semester, and so it's called Better You Health and Fitness, and it was something I was just doing for fun, um, kind of just a passion and a release, and it's turned into a business opportunity that's gonna turn into a job post-graduation, which is really cool, and we've been working with local businesses and uh, leaders in uh, Winona State University, and 
the opportunities that are arising are, are really cool. Uh, we re recently just teamed up with Midtown Foods. Um, we got some really cool things going on with them. And it's really kind of become like a dream come true, just something you're doing for fun. And now some people are like, oh, you could get paid for this and do this. I'm like, sure, let's, let's do it. Uh, and, and so I'm excited to see where that takes me. Now, I looked at, at some things that were on the web about you and, and uh I think you have contributed some recipes uh, to, to the app and the, in the food preparation. So what kind of chef are you? Yeah, so <laughs> la last semester when I was first doing it, um, I got a lot of crap for like my friends because I would always put me cooking on my Snapchat. And, you know, I was like, I'm just like, I'm just trying to help you guys show you these recipes. But I was like, all right, fine. I'm going to make my own app and put my own recipes on there. And that's what it started as. And, and now it's just developed into this whole holistic health thing with not only recipes and and... And yeah, so I mean, I was just starting with with cooking like dinners and whatnot, and I was I was big into like fish and, and steak and kind of doing like those thirty second videos you see on Facebook and whatnot. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of how the whole thing started. You know, just talk about a little bit about how hard it is as a student athlete um, to we we struggle with keeping weight on. And you know, we're an athletic team, we're a fast team, but um, it's something we talk about all the time. And we we have people, we have programs, but. Why is it so difficult for guys as, as student athletes, especially men, um, to keep weight um, on their bodies during the football season? I'd say the biggest thing is time um, and, and laziness. Uh, and <laughs> cook, cook, cooking, it, it's really not that hard. It's the biggest thing is finding time to do it. So that's why one thing I've been preaching to a lot of the guys is meal prepping. And, and that's why I'm glad we teamed up with Midtown because we now basically have these, these healthy microwavable dinners. So I was telling the guys, instead of seeing you guys making these late night runs to Arby's or McDonald's and whatnot, I was like, I want to see you putting these in the microwave, eating these. And, and that's, that's kind of just the biggest thing is, is a time thing. And, and the people don't want to, when they have that free time, they don't want to cook. They don't want to do those things. So I'd say that's probably the biggest issue people run into. Okay. And I think one of the big things about this, too, is that it's not just an athlete thing. This is kind of the whole Winona State campus, maybe Winona community thing that you've uh, worked with Midtown about. Yeah, and that's one thing I was telling Coach Sawyer about because uh, we didn't want to run into any issues down the road, but anyone uh, is open to doing that and being a part of it, and it, it can help anyone. And at any point of your journey or where you are uh, kind of living a healthy lifestyle, there's always something you can do better, something you can focus on, and, and that's kind of what we're after, just creating a better you. And so that's what all about. Let's go back to football, Let's and uh, <laughs> since you guys are a bunch of lazy guys from what I hear, um, but more importantly, um, you know, where are we going to go? Um, you're a big part of our offense, you're a holder, you do a lot of things for our football team, but what do we have to do in the next 12 days to get to, get to that place where, where you guys have never been before? I think the, the team meeting we had on Sunday at one really just kind of, you said, it sticks with you, but you can't let it stick too long, and we kind of just had to take a step back. Yeah, it hurt. But we have to understand what's still ahead of us. And like you said, we still have a huge opportunity to be one of those top teams in Winona State history, which is something really cool. And two games, 12 days, you know, everyone's beat up. It's that time of the season. But you kind of just got to flush it. Let's, let's go to work and, and see where we can go uh, in terms of postseason and, and just finish the, the season strong. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for joining us here today, and uh, good luck this week. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. When we come back, we'll talk about next week, Southwest Minnesota State, the next opponent. It's right after this. What's a Southern girl? It's waking up before the sun rises. It's loving the simple things in life, like the dirt roads that lead you home. It's working hard to get what you want. It's hanging your own stands, breaking your own ground, and strategizing every little move for that one moment when everything you've worked for is standing right in front of you. Even if I fail a million times, I keep pushing myself till I'm exhausted, filthy, and about to give up. And that's when the adrenaline hits. Pick your channels, not your nose. With HBC's Essentials Plus, pick and choose the channel packs of your choice without getting your fingers dirty. With so many new items on the menu at Wellington's Pub and Grill, you're in for some tough decisions. Six different salads, homemade soups, huge wraps, juicy steaks, the Wells' own smokehouse ribs, and as always, the best burgers in town. See, 
We told you it wasn't going to be easy. Log on to wellingtonspubandgrill.com for daily lunch and evening specials. With so many choices for lunch and dinner, you can never come to this well too often. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show here on HBC TV 25, brought to you by Wellington's Pub and Grill and Coach. You know, it's always great to hear these uh, other players that come in and, and the backgrounds that they have and some of the plans that they have in the future, because I know that that's one of the things that brings people here to Winona State. We talk about some of the players that come from other schools and they come here to finish their career. And a lot of times when I ask them, why, is, why did you come here to Winona State? It's because you have talked to them previously, not just about football, but about their life after football. Well, I think that we, you know, we're just one of those teams or philosophies, I guess, that we have in our recruiting that we're really telling it like it's going to be. Um, we're not, you know, guys out there just trying to, you know, talk a kid into coming to our school for the football part. Um, that, that, that is a big reason. Uh, football is a huge reason, especially for an 18-year-old kid coming out of high school that's all state, all everything. Uh, but more importantly is we're trying to make sure that they understand that at the, the end result, the most important day is still graduation day, mm -hmm. and then make sure that they're in position to do something spectacular when they leave this place. Um, and, and I think we're accomplishing that. I think over 20 years of, of service that we've had with, to our student athletes, um, and not just our program, but all programs, uh, our kids are ready when they, when they leave here and they're doing you know, marvelous things, actually. It's incredible. And you can just see these two guys that, that are ready to go when they leave here, and uh, they're off and running. But they know that part of the reason they're successful later is because of the, 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 really what we did here with them as a student athlete. All right, so let's take a look at, at what this week looks like now, preparing for uh, Southwest you know, try to get back on track after last week. What are some of the things that, that you're going to do with the team this week to get them ready for Saturday? Well, I want to start by hitting each one of them with the sledge. Um, you know, we're playing the, the battle of the sledge, right. and, and uh, that, that's a big thing, you know. And anytime you, you play the brown jug, the pig, you know, there, a lot of schools have this, and we, and we have this with Southwest, and it started, you know, a while back. But um, it, it's fun. Uh, we have the sledge. It's ready to go. We'll bring it with us and hope to bring it back. So that's a motivator. Um, the second part is we just got to play great football. Um, they're struggling a little bit right now, but, but they have plenty of weapons. And uh, they play us tough. Uh, playing over in Marshall in the wind, all that is, is a tough place to play. They're good there. Um, and we, we know and understand that. But it's really about going and executing and, and getting us all on all eight cylinders and uh, to finish up the, the next 12 days. But this week in particular, we got to go and come off the bus ready to roll. Well, that was one of the great moments of this show last year when you brought the sledge in and we were able to talk about that. Well, I was going to bring it today, but it wouldn't fit in the Jeep. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Maybe next, next week. week. Next yeah, week. Next we week. Next week. Next week. Let's uh, talk a little bit about injuries. I know you talked about uh, Darren Bacon kind of being beat up a little bit, sacked a couple of times. You said he's going to be ready to go uh, for this week. Yep. How's he doing right now? He's doing well. I, you know, we, we talked after the game for quite a while, and, and uh, you know, he, he was, uh, you, know, you know, didn't take him out of the game. We pulled him out of the game just, you know, at the end to try to get some other, get some experience as well. And um, so I think that he, would, he was fine. Our team doctors were there. They looked at him, and everything was okay. So right now we expect that we'll have a full crew there. Um, we didn't lose anybody else in the game. Um, even uh, we had one kid that left the game, um, Connor Schultz, who was our offensive MVP, mm -hmm. um, smashed into their bleachers because their field is, you know, the stuff is so close to the field there, so it's dangerous. Um, but it's not broke. His arm's not broke, so he should be all good to go. So right now it's like patchwork, you know, put them all together and get them on the field, and, and we have plenty of weapons to, to put on the bus with us. Do you have anybody coming back uh, this week off of injury? Well, we'll be looking at Mikey Imperiali uh, to see if he's ready to go this week. He did practice last week a little bit. Um, you know, we got Clint Warminski back a little bit more last week, and, and also, you know, we're trying to get, you know, Vinny uh, Falico ready to go, and, and if Vince can go, that just helps us, you know, uh, in that offensive line as well uh, to really get that run game going again. So. Right now, we hope to get both of those guys back, if not for the last one for sure, but uh, looking forward to seeing those two guys back on the field. All right, and then final minutes here, another plug for your luncheons. I think we're getting towards the end of the luncheons. Yeah, this we're, right now, we'll bring our last one this week, and we're back at the Plaza Hotel again uh, this week because of some conflict in scheduling. But uh, we had a lot of fun last week, and we'll do that again this week and talk about the games. But uh, And then we play on the following Thursday. So this week, Thursday at noon uh, at the Plaza Hotel. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, and good luck against Southwest. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate thank you it. for joining us here on the Tom Sawyer Show. We'll see you next week here on HBC TV 25.